everybody as you're joining us. Um, I'm just waiting for uh, participants to hop into uh, the webinar and we'll get moving here in just about a minute. I hope everybody is having a great morning. Great, so um, it looks like people will just continue to tick in here for a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Digital Drop-In uh, Learning here with the Wild Center. Um, I'm Michael, School Programs Coordinator, um, and I just wanted to welcome you all and give you a little bit of Zoom 101 um, as we uh, go into our second week of Zoom webinars uh, with Digital Drop-Ins. Uh, so if you're, you're new to this program, um, we will be utilizing the question and answer feature, uh, which should be on the bottom of your screen. So down on the bottom of the screen, there should be a Q&A uh, where you can put in questions throughout the program. Um, and we'll try to answer those for you uh, via text throughout um, and then have some question and answers uh, at the end uh, with Leah uh, as, as she talks a little bit more about animal behaviors. Um, so with that, uh, if you are uh, in gallery view, if you go to the top right hand corner of your screen, uh, there should be a section for gallery view or speaker view. Um, if you are in gallery view, go ahead and click the speaker view. Otherwise, I should be able to drive uh, the screen that you all are seeing throughout. So right now, um, I've spotlighted my screen so you can see me. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and move on to Leah here in just a second. So without further ado, uh, let's hop into animal behaviors. Uh, so here we go, we'll spotlight Leah and she can go ahead and say hi. Hi everybody, welcome to digital learning, my first experience with digital learning. So we're gonna try something a little new today. I am here on site at the Wild Center with one of our animal ambassadors who <laughs> is of course off camera right now, but I'm sure we'll come on to camera. It is Livia, our rock pigeon, which is pigeon, rock dove, people call them a lot of different names, but you've seen them everywhere. They're those pigeons you see on the, on the telephone lines and in little barns and in parking lots and all that kind of stuff. So she'll be joining us today and hopefully we'll learn a little bit about animal behavior. So for the purposes of this discussion, we first need to determine what behavior is and create a definition for it. So if anybody wants to shoot us an answer, what is behavior? What does it mean to you when you hear that word? Or if your parents say to you, oh, behave, what does that mean? And I'm gonna give you just a second to see. I see some people saying hi. Okay. Um, a lot of people, when they think about behavior, think of it in terms of labels. They might say that animal's happy or sad or aggressive or violent or all kinds of things like that. And we're gonna hopefully learn a little bit more so we can describe behavior in a better way and understand the animals around us. I'm just gonna check and see. Technology, hold on one sec, let me check the answers. Okay, for the purposes of this program, we're gonna use a very simple definition of behavior. I'm gonna turn maybe a little bit so you can actually see Livia the pigeon as I'm talking. So behavior really is any observable action an animal does. That's the simplest definition for us right now in this setting. There's a lot of definitions. If you Google the word behavior and you look at definitions, there's a lot of ways to describe it. But that's the one I use the most here at work because it really helps us to understand the animals a little better. So again, any observable action the animal does. As you're looking at Livia the pigeon right here, you might be seeing some behaviors. Anybody see any behaviors that are really interesting you wanna talk about? Let me just check. Hold on while I make my screen bigger so I can actually see. Okay, let's see uh, the way they act. Renee says behavior is the way an animal acts. Yep, how someone or something acts, absolutely. So it's an action item. It's what the animal is doing that we can see and put words to. So unlike you could say, Livia looks happy right now. What does happy look like? If we were to describe the actions she's doing 
that might include happy. Right now I see her moving her head, blinking. Those are all behaviors. Is she doing anything else anyone notices? I'm gonna try to keep up with the Q&A. Cleaning herself, packing up my hair. Yep, those are all behaviors. So the reason why we wanna use our words to describe behavior, is because if we just used, for instance, the word happy, it kind of makes, it makes us just look at her in one way and we could be wrong. She might not be happy. She might be something else. So I'm gonna just show you a couple examples of the way labels can sometimes get us in trouble when we label an animal. I am gonna share my screen. Let's see, I'm gonna share that. And we're gonna take a look at a little PowerPoint I created with some interesting pictures, if I can get there. One moment. And, haha. Hopefully you all can see this. All right. So if you're looking at this animal right now, this bird, this is a blue bird. If you had to give it one word, how would you describe this bird? Let's see. Just look at the bird for a second. What word comes to mind when you're seeing this bird right now? Let's see. Yep, Tom said that she's preening. She's definitely preening my hair right now. Okay. Hopefully you all can see my screen. Can you see that? Ooh, now I'm getting some fluffy, angry, grumpy, fat, cold, hungry, angry. Yeah, those are all words that I would use to describe this bird if I just saw this picture like this, okay. Now, instead of using a label, if I were to describe the observable actions this bird is doing right now, how would you describe it? Use words, any observable actions. So what are we seeing in this bird right now? If I can just keep up with the questions. Bluff ball, staring, glaring. Yeah, those are all great labels. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of context, which might change what we think. So a lot of people, this is a, a photo that's been going around the internet for a while now, and people term this angry bird. Um, they use this photo a lot and use angry, grumpy, all kinds of things. But I see that Lorelai and Ben are describing some observable actions. They're saying this bird is staying warm by puffing up. Absolutely, I think that's probably true. I mean, staying warm is, we're guessing. What about the actions that this bird seems to be doing right now makes you think that it's staying warm? What do you think about that? Oops, and I hit ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit ahead so fast. I'm wearing gloves and it's hard to use a computer and wear gloves at the same time. All right, Lorelai and Ben, what made you think, and let me go back to that first picture, that that bird was staying warm. Yeah, a lot of people. Because it's snowy around it, absolutely. So that's a really good clue. As you're describing the actions an animal's doing, you can also use some other clues from the environment to sort of give you an idea of what that animal might be doing. But if you just label it angry, grumpy, do you think those are right? They probably weren't. Let's go to another example. Okay, now we'll go to this picture. All right, what about this dog? What are you seeing with this dog? What do you think this dog is feeling or thinking or what behavior do you think it's doing right now? And yes, you can type your comments and answers in the question and answer section. Annoyed, Laura said it looked annoyed, yeah. The dog looks annoyed. Yep, that, that could be a good, just from what you're seeing right here, that's a good idea. Happy and smiling, completely opposite. Two people had two different reactions to what this dog might be doing. Aggression, yep, yep, yep. Anybody else? Happy, hungry, mad, growling. 
scared, crazy. Okay, so those are a lot of different ideas of what happens when we label an animal. Now let's watch the whole video to see what's actually going on. So what's happening is the owner is getting ready to take this dog out for a walk. And I just took a picture of it when it was looking at the owner with its mouth open. If I were to describe the behaviors, and I'm going to go back to the picture for a second. Rather than just saying aggressive, scared, angry, happy, all of those things, I would say this dog has its head up, that's a behavior. Its mouth is open, that's a behavior. Teeth are showing. Its ears are back further on the head versus up high. And those are all behaviors I can see that aren't just saying, oh, it's happy or angry or sad or those kind of things. When I start to talk about behaviors and really list what I'm seeing, it makes me think a little more. What else could be going on with this animal versus it's happy or grumpy or any of those things? Okay. I am going to stop sharing my screen for a second. So let's talk a little bit about now what influence, what influences behavior for an animal? There's a few things that influence behavior. Um, and if anybody wants to take a guess, I'm trying to keep up with the Q&A here. If anybody wants to take a guess, what might be uh, influencing behavior, there's a few things. So for a wild animal, it could be the natural history of that animal. Where does that animal usually spend its time? What kind of habitat? What does it do in the habitat? What are the foods it eats? How does it get food? So those things can all influence behavior. Livia here is a rock pigeon for those of you just joining us. So she's the kind of pigeon you see all over the place. They're pretty ubiquitous, meaning you see them all across the United States. They're in all kinds of places from old barns to farm fields to parking lots to maybe your backyard even. Um, they're originally native to Asia, Europe, and they were brought to America a long time ago. They were actually really valuable in World War I and World War II. They were trained, well, not trained. One of their natural behaviors is they have a natural homing instinct. So soldiers used that behavior to help send notes in those wars. They would actually attach little notes to the pigeon and release it from wherever they took the pigeon to back to wherever it needed to go. So that's a natural history. And I'm gonna, so you can see her a little better. She just wants to move around. Um, being a rock pigeon, we know there's certain behaviors she's probably not gonna display. She's probably not gonna swim, right? Um, and I see Ashley and Colin say, time of year and how it's treated might affect behavior. Absolutely, you guys. Laura says, what's around the animal? Absolutely. So environment is really important. As we saw in that bird, that blue bird in the first picture, um, that was the winter scene. That bird was really puffed up. We are surmising that the bird was staying warm by puffing up those feathers. And fun fact, feathers are really insulating. We know that. You've probably heard of down before. That is comes mostly from ducks. When birds puff up their feathers like that, it has such a strong insulating value that a lot of these little birds can survive extreme temperatures. They trap heat against their body and stay really warm. It's a cool fact. Okay, so we said natural history of the animal, An environment can affect, and then the individual itself, their individual history can affect behavior. Let me just check in again. So Livia here, came to us from a local veterinarian. She had some kind of wing injury. They did an x-ray and they didn't find any broken bones, but she wasn't able to fly very well. So they called us up, we took her in, and we have been working with her. So she has an old wing injury that is mostly healed at this point, 
but that's going to affect some of her behavior. As we think about her, how might that wing injury affect the behaviors we see her doing? She might not fly as well. So if we're going to train her here at the museum to say, go from a really low perch to a really high one, she might not be able to do it. Um, so those are just some ways individual behavior can influence. All right. How's everybody doing? Just going to check in. And as you're, gosh, she just wants to be in a place that's hard for me to keep her on camera. As we're talking here, feel free to point out more behaviors you're seeing in her. But there are other behaviors that are going on around me and with me. So if you want to point out any of the behaviors that you're noticing at all here, feel free to go ahead. Okay, I'm just checking in again. All right, now that we have a definition of behavior, we're going to talk about how behavior works. Very simply, there's usually something that happens before a behavior that sort of sets the stage, meaning there's, there's something happening in the environment or there's something around the animal that is going to encourage a certain kind of behavior. The behavior happens. And then after the behavior happens, it's either really good for the animal or really bad for the animal. That's called a consequence. So the behavior does something to either help or hurt the animal. And if we see that, we can sort of use that here to know how to direct the behaviors. So we call that the ABCs of behavior. I'm gonna throw some big vocabulary words out at you. I was trying to find some better words to make it a little easier to understand. Okay, Maddie says she's puffing out her chest. Yep, she's doing that. So the ABCs of behavior, A, it's called an antecedent, which is a big word. And all that means is that setting the stage. B, behavior, the animal does a behavior. And C is the consequence. Now, the word consequence, you've probably heard about it before. Did you ever get in trouble and you had a consequence or a punishment happen? A punishment is one kind of consequence. A reinforcement, that is something we use here a lot, is an animal, something an animal likes a lot. So it would be if you got a really good grade on your test and someone took you out to dinner. That's a good consequence or reinforcement. So that's when we're looking at behavior here at the museum, we try to think about what happened before the behavior to encourage it to happen, what the behavior is, and what the consequence is. So now we get to some of our interesting activities. We are going to observe some of the behaviors that Livia here is doing. We're going to try to think about it in terms of what's happening right before the behavior, what was the behavior, and what happened to the behavior afterwards. Was she encouraged for that behavior or was she um, punished for the behavior? So hold on one moment again. And I am going to show you another thing in just a moment. Sorry, bear with me as I <laughs> manipulate all of the things happening while wearing gloves. OK. Olivia says she's twitching her head. Lucy says she's excited and confused. Um. She looks curious. She's leaning into the discussion. Okay. So let's pick one of those behaviors. Let's see. What one of those behaviors? Let me just see what one of those behaviors we want to talk about. Um, let's talk about twitching her head. Let's talk about that one in terms of the ABCs. So she's Somebody noticed she's twitching her head back and forth. What do you think happened right before she started twitching her head back and forth to make her twitch her head back and forth? Anybody have a clue what it might be? And there are no right or wrong answers. Laurel I and Ben noticed she's moving around. Yep. No right or wrong answers. Why might she be doing this with her head? What would cause her to do it? And it's a pigeon thing. It's a pretty common thing you see in pigeons. If I had to guess, she's hearing a lot of noises. So she's moving her head back and forth 
to listen to those noises. So the A there, the thing that set the stage to make her move her head was a noise. So a noise happened, she moved her head. Now, is there a C, a consequence to that behavior? Noise happened, moved her head. What was the consequence? Did she get something out of that? Was she rewarded for that behavior in some way? Was she punished for it and won't do it anymore? I don't think she was punished because she's still doing it, right? Let me just check in with the Q&A again. Sorry, folks, I keep flipping back and forth on some screens. She noticed something, she's learning. Something interesting might have happened nearby, looking for food, hearing something, sees something. Those are all excellent observations. Any one of those could be true. Not necessarily, we, we might not necessarily know what the A is, but those are all great guesses. Now tell me what you think happened when she does the head moving. Does she get something out of it? Okay, Lorelai and Ben said she was not rewarded. Will says she was rewarded. Why are you, either way, why do you think she was rewarded or not rewarded? What do you think? Something got her attention, yep, yep. Again, if we go with my theory or some of the other theories about hearing something or seeing something, if she moved her head around, she might be able to hear a little better. I actually have a little harder time hearing out of my left ear. I had some trouble when I was a kid with a lot of ear infections. Anybody else have a lot of ear infections growing up? So I don't hear as well out of this ear. And if a sound comes from this way, I naturally go like this. I lean my, <laughs> she's gonna peck my ear. I lean my head this way and what happens is, so usually, okay, there's a noise. There's a noise over here. That's the A. The behavior for me is I move my ear towards it and I can hear a little better. That's the consequence. I hear a little better when I move my head towards the sound. Okay, let me check in again. Uh, I, it looks like she's fouling your hand. Do you feed her by hand as a reward? Yes, Ashley and Colin, we absolutely do do that. It is part of her training. We are working on training her to be an animal ambassador, meaning we will handle her for programs and we want her to be really comfortable being around us and coming near us. Uh, Renee says she was rewarded by hearing the discussion. She absolutely could be. Pigeons are pretty social birds. So again, going back to their natural history, in the wild, in their behavior is to hang out with other pigeons. They mate for life, so they'll go back to the same mate year after year. And yep, Laura says she's hearing what she tilted her head for. And Lorelai and Ben said they don't think she's getting anything. That could be true too. We don't know for certain, but we can make some what we call educated guesses. And there, again, there's in behavior, there's not a lot of right and wrong answers. We just learn about behavior, we study it, and we come to conclusions based on what we know of the animals, of the environment, of the situation that's happening. I do think the head moving was probably getting her something, either hearing or seeing. I believe that probably was happening. Okay. So now we have the fun of let's do this at home. Again, just give me a moment while I share my screen. I can just get to it. So I am going to show you what you can do at home. I'm gonna share this. Oops, nope. Ugh, I keep hitting ahead too fast. Okay, hopefully, you all can see this sheet. So this is something you can do at home. You can find this sheet right on our website, wildcenter.org backslash digital learning. On there, you can watch this video again to listen to the discussion if you'd like to. And you will also find the link to the sheet if you wanna use it. So what we're gonna ask you to do is find an animal near you. And it can be a pet you have, you can go outside and watch animals outside, which could be birds, squirrels, insects, anything. 
It also could be your family because we are animals too. So you can observe your family. Uh, I'm sure that you've all been observing your family quite a bit lately and we're probably sick of observing our families. So I encourage you to go outside safely and look at some of the animals that are in your environment. And you're gonna describe your animal and you're gonna decide what you think you're gonna see. What behaviors are you gonna see? You're gonna take a few minutes to look at your chosen animal and observe their behaviors. And we have broken it down into some simple categories. Sleeping, eating, exploring, grooming, interacting with other animals, or if you see something that doesn't match any of those, you can write that in. We're gonna ask you to do it for five minutes. And if you see any of those behaviors within that five minutes, you can just make a check in one of those boxes. So, now it's time for questions. Who has questions for us? I'm gonna, or for me, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second to go back to my big screen and see. Uh, I see in the beginning, Lucy asked, do I hear an owl in the background? Um, I don't know that I've heard any wild owls right now, but there is a raven right over here who has been making a lot of noise, and there is a red-tailed hawk over that way in another habitat who's been making quite a bit of noise. Yeah, okay. Questions. Who has questions? Um, I'm looking at some of the questions. There's a teacher, Jenna, Jenny, who wants to know if we can make the document on our website for this program in an edible document in Word or Google Doc. Um, we will definitely look into that. I am not the website person. <laughs> I'm the animal person, but I will make sure we check into that and we will definitely try that. I can understand. This is well, help. Sorry to interrupt. Can you hear me, Leah? Yes. This is Michael. Um, so uh, I was just going to type a response to this question, but I'm more than happy to share out any of these resources as uh, Word or Google Docs or something that's editable. Um, you would just reach out to digital learning at wildcenter.org and that will be in text format in just a second. Digital learning at wildcenter.org. Great. Thanks, Michael. Um, will, Laura wants to know, will there be an otter presentation soon? Um, I am trying to remember the schedule in my head, and I don't know it off the top of my head, but uh, stay tuned. We're definitely going to do more otter stuff. We actually just did um, some really cool introductions yesterday to two otters who hadn't previously been together, and um, I did film some of that, which might be not a live presentation, but a taped one. So we'll definitely show you that. And, and we have a lot of otter content we're gonna show you. How long have we had Livia? Um, she came to us November or December, I think. Is it true that pigeons eat almost anything? Um, I have certainly seen them eating a lot of different things. They're mostly seed eaters in the wild. So, um, seed, corn, stuff like that, that you will see them getting into trash and eating french fries and stuff like that. Olivia here really loves peas. Those are her favorite food. Do we have any ducks? We do. We have two wood ducks at the Wild Center. How long do rock pigeons live? In the wild, it's not very long four-ish years on average, and in captivity, they can sometimes live up to 30 years, believe it or not. Oh, can you hear her? And now she's doing some interesting behaviors. You can see her. Yep. Those are some behaviors to notice. I'm gonna put her over here. So I'm doing some behaviors too. She did some and I'm doing some. Okay, I think I answered a lot of the questions. Can she still fly? Um, she can fly a bit. She has trouble gaining elevation, so going from a lower spot to a higher spot. She still has trouble. We're not really sure. Um, we think she probably had some maybe tendon damage, so no broken bones on x-ray, but um, maybe tore a tendon or something like that. Why does she make that noise? It's a great question, Laura. We can guess. 
So when did she make it? What happened right before she started making the noise? Um, if you're talking about the noise she was just making, um, she was sitting on my hand as she was making that noise. So my guess would be that's the A in the ABC. I put my hand up, she stepped on my hand and then started making that noise. And whether that was um, good or bad for her, we might be able to determine by the next behavior, Lorelai and Ben noticed she was pecking me. Absolutely. So my hand moved in, she stepped on it, started vocalizing. She also popped all those feathers up under her chin, which you might not have noticed. And then she started pecking my glove. So my guess is she didn't really like my hand being there, which is why I moved her to a perch behind me. All right, I'm gonna check in with Michael about our timing and see if there's anything else we need to do before we wrap up the section session. Thank you so much, Leah. You're welcome. And I wanna thank everybody for joining us. Oh my gosh, she really doesn't like my hand, does she? Uh, we're gonna do more of this kind of stuff. Join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11. You can also watch programs at noon of Lunchtime Live. We are so grateful that you are joining us and um, letting us do these cool programs. This is what we love to do and we're, we're gonna keep doing it. So stay tuned. Great, thanks Leah. Uh, have a great afternoon, everybody. Definitely tune in as, as Leah mentioned for Facebook Live, uh, Lunchtime Live on Facebook. And then this Thursday we'll be checking out the solar system for a pocket solar system activity uh, here uh, at 11 o'clock Thursday morning. Uh, so have a, a wonderful afternoon and we'll see you later. Bye.